Well, welcome. It is Wednesday, and I am so thankful that you are joining us for our new Lenten virtual series. Today, I am so grateful to share with you the ministry of Pastor Monique French, who is the pastor of the Washington Heights United Methodist Church. We welcome her today, and she's going to share with you what God has shared with her. Her. We also, we are so grateful uh, for the gifted music of Brother Franklin Ballard. Uh, Brother Ballard is no guest for us. Brother Ballard is one of our own. And so we are appreciative uh, for him providing for us the inspirational music for, for our gathering. I pray now you would invite, like, and share let others know that this is our noon Lenten service as we continue to talk about a faith that will see us through. Amen. Come now, let's be blessed. We'll be reading Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, thanking you for this day, thanking you for our, our life, thanking you, Father, for all that you do for us, and all that you say that you will do and that you have done. We he ask now, Father, to bless and keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We ask these praise in thy Son, Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Amen. 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 I'd like to um, take this opportunity and thank Minister Franklin Ballard um, for the wonderful selections in worship on this afternoon, this evening, or whenever it is that you are watching this. My name is Monique French. I am the pastor of Washington Heights United Methodist Church. And first, I want to thank my colleague and friend, uh, Pastor Wine, for this opportunity um, to minister before you. I'd like to also thank um, Second Missionary Baptist Church family. I am always humbled at the opportunity um, when I have the opportunity to share God's word. So I just want to thank God for you. Uh, this theme for this Lenten series is a faith that sees you through. Again, um, to Pastor Wine and Second um, Missionary Baptist Church family, I just want to say thank you, and I am honored to be able to share God's word with you. On Wednesday, um, the first Lenten season uh, series on Wednesday, I believe it was Reverend White, the esteemed pastor of Battle Creek Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, he made mention of a man at the pool of Bethesda. So I started thinking about that as I was preparing to bring this message to you. And so I thought about um, the situation. And so this uh, message will be coming to you from the book of John, the fifth chapter, verses one through nine. Again, that is John, the fifth chapter, verses one through nine. And this sermon uh, or this message is titled, Do You Want to Be Made Whole? We know that um, people have been experiencing trying times and very difficult times. And so I asked the Lord, what message could I share with you um, that will provide you with encouragement and hope? And so this is what the Lord had given me. So I just wanted to start off by saying I love movies. Don't judge me. <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you that I love movies. As a preacher, you can get many things from movies. As a preacher, you can get a lot from movies. I just wanted to get that off my chest before I get started, just to share with you that I love movies. So some of you may or may not agree with me, but one of the best movies that I have seen was The Black Panther. I love that movie. It's amazing to me how God would use a make-believe Marvel movie to remind and stir up pride in people who must have forgotten who they are. This movie depicts black folks, African Americans, whatever you like to be called, it depicts black folks, African Americans in a positive light, giving our young people hope, vision of who they are, and giving them faith in who they could become. This movie showed people that they don't have to live up, live up to the negative stigma that has been attached to being black in America. This movie showed that we are ingenuitive and beautiful people. Let me say that again, because you may not have gotten that. This movie showed that we are beautiful and ingenuitive people. Remember not too long after the movie had aired, you had grown folks hollering Wakanda forever? Was that you? Okay, mm -hmm, I see you. <laughs> Real quick, let me summarize the movie for you. It's about an African tribe that comes across a rare substance called vibranium. The warrior would ingest this heart-shaped herb containing metals that will give him superhuman abilities, and he will become the Black Panther. In the movie, this warrior had faith to unite all the tribes but one to form the kingdom of Wakanda. When the movie began, the original king had just died, and the people had assumed that his son would be next to inherit the throne. However, he couldn't just take the throne. He had to go through rituals and the possibility of entering into combat before he could be crowned king. Therefore, there were customs and rituals, legal parameters, laws, rules that govern everything in the kingdom of Wakanda. And this particular individual had to obey those rules. When a powerful enemy suddenly reappears, the young prince Tuchela's mantle as king and his position as the Black Panther gets tested. He is drawn into conflict that puts the fate of Wakanda and the entire world at risk. 
faced with the treachery and the danger, the young king or the young prince kept the faith and rallied all his allies together and released the full power of the Black Panther to defeat his foes and to secure the safety of the people. The Marvel movie Black Panther is a make-believe movie, but the kingdom of God is not. Jesus, our king, has released his full power to defeat the enemy and to secure the fate of his people. If you did not have hope before that, right there should have gave you hope. That right there should have stirred up a pride and should have stirred up faith within you. That was good right there. That was enough for all of us to give God praise. That should stir up faith. In, that should stir up in faith, uh, faith in us that we are able to see that God will see us through because there is nothing that our God can't fix. There is nothing that our God can't handle. There is nothing that God can't turn around. There is nothing that God can't change because the kingdom belongs to him. He is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end, the creator of the universe. He is God most high. He is the God who sees us. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, the provider. He is our redeemer. He is a mighty healer. He is God and all power is in his hand. Therefore, I know that if you are a believer, you have faith that will stand. Because God has been tested and proven, and therefore nothing is too big that our God can't handle. Nothing is too big. Nothing is bigger than our God. Somebody shout and give God praise. He is the one who could put our enemy in check. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of John, the fifth chapter, verses one through nine. As you are finding the scripture, I thought about this. When one is broken, it's hard to imagine being complete or whole. So the title of this sermon is, Do You Want to Be Made Whole? I want to read this passage of scripture into your hearing from the book of, of John, the fifth chapter, verses one through nine from the New King James translation. And it reads as follows. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, then whoever stepped in first after the water had been stirred was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made whole? Some translations use the word well. The man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred. But while I am coming down, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath day. The word of God for the people of God. Do you know anybody or have you ever had a loved one trapped? Then you know that unless there is a desire to be released from the vice that is squeezing life out of them, little will change. I know people, as I am sure many of you do, whose history includes a long series of bad choices, poor nutrition to extreme unproductive and destructive behavior. All of this causes deterioration to the body and to the soul, but nothing causes deterioration like a person who has lost their faith. Truth is, is that if we are to be whole, whether health, 
for our body or restoration in our family or renewed passion in our life with God, then we must want to be made whole. We must want it, hunger for it, desire it. We must desire to be made whole. In our passage, sometime after his stay in Galilee, Jesus travels back to the city of Jerusalem. John sets the scene very carefully for us. After, th after these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. During this time, the Jewish calendar contain contained three important holy days, Passover, we uh, Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, or the Feast of Tabernacle. It was common or expected for the devout Jews living in or around the area of Jerusalem to attend all these special, special days. However, there were exceptions for those who lived further than 16 miles away from Jerusalem. They were only expected to attend one of the feasts each year. Some theologians believe that since Jesus was a devout Jew, and like other devout Jews, he made the pilgrims to the holy city as often as possible to observe the holy feast days. Now, when Jesus got to Jerusalem, he entered the city by the sheep gate and went to the pool of Bethesda. When you look at that word Bethesda, Bethesda in Greek means house of mercy. This signifies what was about to take place because whenever Jesus, the king, shows up truly, truly, I say truly, grace and mercy will follow. The pool of Bethesda was separated by a wall in the middle, creating two bodies of water. The sheep were washed on one end of the pool and the people bathed on the other end of the pool. Around the sides of, of the pool where the people bathed, there were five porches or porticos. These were covered walkways. It was there where the people gathered in hopes of being healed. Scripture says that in these lie a great multitude of those with infirmities, sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting, waiting, waiting for something happen that would change their situation. Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine the agony of waiting, seeing what you want, but it's just out of your reach, seeing a solution to your problem, but not being able to reach it, struggling to find that thing that will make a difference in your life, but it just being out of your reach, struggling to make a change in life, but not quite able to get there. People struggling with issues, issues. I'm not going down that road anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm not going over there anymore, struggling to change, but things are remaining the same. Nurturing the sickness and losing focus of the one who heals concentrating on the problem instead of focusing on the solution. This man was sick for a long time. Some people have been in their situations for a long time. This man, instead of surrounding himself with people who could help, he surrounded himself with people who were sick, just like him. Sick people comforting sick people. Misery loves company. This sick man surrounded himself with people who were sick just like him. This is the development of dysfunction. This man gravitated to those who were sick like him, and they created a culture, a community of sick folks. This sick man reflected the company he was keeping. He gravitated to a place where he felt accepted. He was so sick, he surrounded himself with other people who were just as sick. You've heard that expression, birds of a feather flock together. People who gossip hang out with other people who gossip. People who don't want nothing out of life hanging out with other people who don't want nothing out of life. People who get high hang out with other people who get high. This man who was sick was hanging out with other folks who were just as sick as he was. I am here to tell you, when you feel down, don't be like this man and surround yourself with other people who are down. Jesus asked him a question. 
Do you want to be made whole? And I believe that Jesus is asking us that same question. But you know what's interesting to me when I look at this passage of scripture was this man's sad reply. He said, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred. But while I am coming down, another steps in before me. Is it true that some sick people would actually prefer their present condition as opposed to being made well? Is it true that some people would rather not have faith than to surround themselves with people who do have faith? Being whole is connected with responsibility. And besides, who wants that? One can't become changed in the area that they have become comfortable with. Let me say that again. A person can never become changed in the area they have become comfortable with. This man was doing the same thing every day, going to the pool, expecting a different result. This sick man was doing the same thing day after day, lying at the pool, waiting for the stirring of the water. Yet he said that he did not have anyone to help him get into the water. So if the water was stirred, what was he going to do? Just look at it. If he didn't have anyone to help him get into the water and he couldn't put himself into the water, what was he going to do? How was he going to be healed? So what was the purpose of him doing the same thing, thinking he was going to get a different result? He could not become changed in the area that he had become comfortable with. There is little to no hope in this man's sad reply. He had lost all anticipation. He had lost all hope that anything would ever change. He has lost hope that anyone would help him. Decades of pain dashed with the displacement of the possibility brought him to a place where all he can do was see a hopeless future. There are many reasons why we find it difficult in our broken places to stay connected with our desire for change, our desire for something more, to hope for, to live with a deep desire for healing can itself be an excruciating act. It is painful to hold to our desire for friendship when we lack, when the lack of it only excruciates our aching loneliness. It is painful to stay attuned to our hope to be free of anger or fear or self-righteousness when it means we must dismantle our sinful behaviors and reckon with the lies that we've employed to manage our life. We often abandon our desires for wholeness because we are deeply afraid. While the reality of our life may be far less than what we had expected Over time, we make a certain kind of compromise with our brokenness. We begin to accept it. We become hopeless. It becomes what we know. It is a fearful thing to surrender the security of the present, not knowing how, no matter how disappointing or how fearful it may be, it is a fearful thing to surrender security of the present for the uncertainty of the future. We hold on to the familiar. When it comes to being made whole, physically or otherwise, the familiar is not always the answer. To be in a hopeless state is not always the answer. When it comes to being made whole, the familiar is not necessarily a virtue. Too often, we simply repeat misinformation, rehearse old prejudice, prejudices, practice tired patterns of behavior, and replay thoughts and opinions formed years ago without first checking to see if they're still valid or relevant today. If they serve the cause of making us healthy or whole, we need to check and to examine ourselves. Just like Jesus asked this man in scripture, do you want to be made whole? Jesus is asking us today, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to experience life in all its abundance? Then maybe, just maybe, we must try a new approach. 
daring to alter our old routines, changing our diets, cultivating new friends, breaking old habits, surrounding ourselves with people who have faith, learn new technologies for relating to others in more effective ways, get out of our old comfort zone. Do you want to be made whole? Because if we do, we might have to step out of our comfort zones and take that leap of faith and venture out into the unknown. What's standing in your way? What sort of things do you need to change about your life in order to be made whole? Are there things that you need to let go of? For example, are you holding on to anger, nursing some injustice or some hurt that you experienced years ago? Are you holding on to grief, looking back to something or someone you want once held dear? Perhaps you're holding on to a destructive habit wanting to be healthy or whole, but not willing to stop smoking or drinking or eating your troubles away. Jesus tells the man to arise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately, the man was made well, took up his mat and he walked. If your faith has been fleeting you, Jesus says to take up your mat and walk. The good news is that Jesus came into the world that we may have life and have it more abundantly. There is a hymn that says, there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. So then the question becomes, do you still want to be made whole? Some of us may fear what we do not understand, and we may have reasons because we do not believe in the promises. Many of us simply fear losing control. To come to Jesus for healing, we must relinquish the idea that our life is in our own hands. We must admit that we need to be healed and that our own efforts have made a mess of things. To allow ourselves to embrace or to be embraced by God's love, we must face the truth of how desperately we need him. To be made whole, we must grow discontent with our misery, discontent with our lack of faith. We want to be made whole. We must want more from the Lord. Pick up your mat and walk. To step into the fullness that God intends, we must be awake to him as well as to our pain and everything that is around us in this world that is not well. We must allow the tears and the joy and the promises of God to resurrect the places of our heart that have grown cold. When Jesus speaks, hope is always rekindled and he's speaking life to your situation today. The heart should be stirred. After, this, this, after the sick man's disheartening reply, Jesus looked at him dead in his eyes, pushing past the gloom, and spoke to the depths of this man's soul with authority. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Then the man had a choice. To be well required obedience willingness to embrace the joy of healing that Jesus offered. The man had to move and to take a risk. I'm encouraging you to move and to take a risk. Have faith in God, a faith that can move mountains. And that's what the man did. This man who had not stood on his legs for 38 long years, he hopped up from, from his mat. He grabbed it. And he began to walk. I can only imagine that at that moment, the man had a little jig in his step because he had faith that was stand. He walked out of his old condition into the new, a new life, a new way of talking, a new way of walking, a new way of interacting with people, a new way of seeing his surrounding, a new people to hang out with, a new way of loving, a new way of looking, a new view of his future, new ways of facing his challenges. It's something about when you have encountered Jesus that all things become new. And that's what I want to share with you today. 
all things are new. And in him, we have a faith that will stand the test of time. The word of God for the people of God. Well, thank you for taking the time to be a part of our season of Lent as we have reflected on the Word of God. Thank you, Pastor French, for sharing with us, as God has shared with you, how much we appreciate how you poured into us. And again, thank you, Brother Ballard, for using your gifts to bless us today in the music. I invite you to join us again next Wednesday. You can join us, of course, at noon. If you miss us at noon, you can join us on our Facebook or our YouTube channel at 7 p.m. You can also hear uh, the Linton service on 99.5 in Battle Creek or 103.7 in Jackson or 99.9 in Abbeyan on the radio station at 12 noon. And then you can also hear Bible study as well on Wednesday night and the rebroadcast of our Linton service as well. Peace and blessings be upon you until we gather again next week. Go in peace and may God go with you. Thank you.